Hi, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. Um, today, we're going to be continuing in our series uh, that is basically subjects that are surrounding the war in Israel. Can you hear that jet? I am right by Nellis Air Force Base. Our church is very close to Nellis Air Force Base, uh, just outside of Las Vegas, Nevada. And I am telling you right now, there is a lot of activity. You, it's not, it's nonstop. So you, during the video, you may hear the jets coming back and forth from the Air Force Base. Uh, uh, yeah, stuff. Uh, we live in interesting times. Amen. But uh, what we want to talk about today is uh, uh, God's real estate deal with the nation of Israel. God, on his own word, made a promise to Abraham and a real estate deal with the nation of Israel. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We're thankful, you're for, thankful for your faithfulness and that you were faithful to all your promises to the nation of Israel in the same way you've been faithful to us as your church. Uh, when you said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You ain't taking that back and you ain't taking back, Lord, any of your promises to your people Israel either. You will fulfill every word. The gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Thank you for being a faithful God, a just God and a good God. Thank you for giving us a book that we can believe every word of and know exactly what you have planned for us and for the nation of Israel. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. So, um, some different views on this. Um, covenant theology, replacement theology, and this is a shame because this is within the fold of Christianity, and these are theological formulas which would deny the literal words of God in the Bible and would steal God's covenant promises from the nation of Israel. Um, when, you, when you come into, uh, well, let's first talk about dispensational theology. And we know that if you don't study your King James Bible dispensationally, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2.15. If you don't do that, then you're going to get yourself in a quagmire and a mess. And that quagmire and that mess, uh, that's entered into by spiritualizing and, and, and making everything allegorical. Uh, you When you want to make everything allegorical, basically what you're doing, you're entering into it with an evil heart of unbelief. In other words, you're saying, no, I don't believe that God knew what he was talking about and said what he meant in clear, plain, clear, plain language. I think God probably was uh, meant this, and everything he said was just a secret code to what I think. See, so what you're doing is you're, you're entering you're entering into reading the Bible with some preconceived pie in the sky, cotton candy theology that you fabricated in your own brain. And uh, I'm going to make all of this just allegorical and symbolic and try to make it about my little cotton candy made up theology. And that's what you that when you come into Calvinism and covenant theology, that's what you get. Um, they, it's, it, it's, just such an oversimplification in covenant theology, uh, it, the basic tenets of uh, Protestantism and Calvinism. It says, you know, that that before time and creation, there was a covenant between the father and the son. And uh, then uh, then th that was uh, uh, that was one covenant. And then from the time God made Adam uh, until he fell, that there was a covenant of works there. And then from the fall of Adam unto the return of Christ. There's just one cub, one big covenant of grace there and Jews and Gentiles and church 
and it's just it's just all the same and that uh, uh, everybody was saved the exact same way through the whole process and that the nation of Israel was just kind of a bump along the road just a step in the progress but that the true Israel of God is just all the saved people from all generations and all the literal physical promises to Israel about a land and a nation and all that that was all just symbolic and getting to the fulfillment, which is the church, is the fulfillment of all the promises to Israel. That's covenant theology and Calvinism. Uh, can I say that's a bunch of BS? And by BS, I don't mean anything bad. I mean Bible stupidity. <laughs> but uh, the, 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 next, the next step beyond that is what we call replacement theology. And replacement theology uh, says this, and you'll get you'll get uh, a whack jobs like Stephen Anderson teaching this kind of garbage, and uh, it's all anti-Semitic. It's a uh, um, it, basically this is this is what Luther believed that God is just totally when when the when the when the Jews God did have a covenant with the Jews, but when the Jews rejected Christ, that God was done with them, over with them, took all the promises to Israel and gave them to the church, and the church replaced Israel. So the very little difference between covenant theology and replacement theology in both systems, all the literal promises to the nation of Israel are symbolic, allegorical, over or done. In both systems, God's done with Israel. All right. So that's that's. That's that's the nonsense that you will find in a theological thought and, and and denominational doctrine and teaching in the world today. Because what you know, what did Paul say? For the time will come, well, they will not endure sound doctrine, but they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and their 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 ears would be they would be turned from the truth and unto fables. Amen. Covenant theology, replacement theology, fables unscriptural, unbiblical. God made a deal with Abraham and by extension, the nation of Israel. Look with me, if you will, in Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15. I'm going to start. I'm going to... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end up reading the whole chapter. It's 21 verses. We'll stop along the way, but this is, this is a very key, pivotal portion of Scripture that you need to know. Verse 1, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram, sa Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me? seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast, uh, Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me a heifer of three years old, and a she goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these and divided them in the midst and laid them each piece again one against another, but the birds he divided not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Ab Abram drove them away. And then, and when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, a horror of great darkness fell about him. And he said unto Abraham, uh, unto Abram, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger. I'll, we'll, we'll stop right here. 
So what he does, he cuts. This is a covenant. It's covenant is to cut, cut a deal, right? They cut a deal. In other words, look at, and it's sealed by blood, right? If, uh, if I violate, if I violate this, or if you violate this, we walk between the pieces. It, 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 it it's, it, it, it's swearing an oath of sorts. And uh, so he makes he makes a covenant. He cuts the deal with Abram. But you notice he said that uh, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. See, this is a one-sided covenant. This is God's unconditional covenant to Abraham. Uh, Abraham, Abraham was sleeping. <laughs> when the deal was made, Abraham was asleep, right? So now he goes on and he says unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. And we know, of course, that's what happened. You the Abraham has Isaac. Isaac has Jacob. Jacob has the, 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 his 12 sons. They're the children of Israel. They sell, they sell Joseph, uh, uh, to the slavers. Joseph rises up in Israel. The children of Israel go into Egypt. Another another king, Pharaoh, rises up in Egypt and puts the children of Israel under bondage, and they become slaves for 400 years in the nation of Egypt, where they increase mightily in population uh, into the millions and become a mighty a mighty nation. Amen. And so that's exactly you know the word of God again giving giving you history in advance. Amen. And he said, No, he said. Of a surety, thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. Verse 14. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And huh? You remember Moses and the plagues in Egypt? Amen. And afterward shall they come out with great substance, a mighty nation. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Okay, Amorites, being the people that are in the Palestinian region, this land grant that uh, is given to Abraham, uh, there's the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Jebusites and the Gitrites and the Hangtites and the Shugnites and you know that it it these are the people that are in the land. Now this is this is 400 years before they come out of the land of Egypt, and uh, God says, "Look, the iniquity of the Amorites ain't full yet." In other words, we're gonna give this we're gonna give these folks in this land. 400 years. And at the end of that 400 years, they're going to be just like the earth was before I flooded it in the days of Noah. It's going to be just the same. He said where every thought of every man's heart was only evil continually. Uh, it, it's going to be like a corrupted, dead limb with gangrene. There, nothing redeemable about it. It must be cut off. He's going to let it get to that complete necrotic state of these people. And it was going to be just like it was before the flood with the giants corrupting the seed of man and everything. And he said, and then at that time, at that time, Israel is going to go in. They're going to wipe them. They're going to wipe them out as the hand of God in judgment. And they'll take the land. Amen. So he says, uh, uh, in the fourth generation, there shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And it shall come to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and burning lamps that passed between those pieces. The deal was cut. God's word was on it. A God who cannot lie promised this deal to Abraham. He says, in the same day, the, verse 18, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land. And, and he gives him some, some, some definition here. From the river of Egypt, under the great river, and the river Euphrates, 
the Kenites and the and, and, and the Kenizzites and, and the Cadmonites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Rephaims and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Girgashites and the Jebusites. I'm giving you, I'm giving it all to you. Israel. Amen. Let me read you a couple little notes here. Um, notice again that the Abraham covenant includes a real estate deal. The one who possessed the heaven and the earth gave that portion of the earth, the land of Canaan, to Abraham. In the passage, his seed will get that land as an inheritance. This is not a reference to Isaac's spiritual typology, according to what follows, because what follows is an everlasting covenant that is unconditional and has nothing to do with salvation in either testament. It is a clear, plain, and simple real estate deal, and <laughs> which the UN, United Nations, has to deal. And God set it up so when they deal falsely and deceitfully with it, they will commit suicide to the rate of well over 2 billion of the earth's population. Read the book of Revelation. It's all, it's all surrounding this deadly piece of dirt. Amen. So, he gives them right there in uh, uh, verse 18. He says, in the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, unto thy seed have I given this land. All right. And he gives, he, now he, he gives you the borders of the real estate deal. From the river of Egypt, the Nile, under the great river, and the river Euphrates. All right. He gives, all right. So I wish I was uh, techie enough to know how to edit these videos and insert the pictures and stuff like that. I haven't got there yet. Hey, but I, I have figured out how to make cool thumbnails though, right? So, you know, hey, I was in prison for 30 years. I had a lot of time to study this, but uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't have any access to computer and tech. So I'm, I'm Fred Flintstone. I'm catching up slowly. But here, let me just do it this way and show you um, the, the original land grant of Abraham, and I'll leave it up there for just a minute, and so you can see it, or you can screenshot it, or whatever. That's the land grant right there. That's the land grant given to Abram, all right? And uh, this, is the ex this is the extent of the land that God promises to the sons of Abraham. Isaac and Jacob, this is what was originally Eden. Eden covered from Mount Ararat to the Nile and back to the Persian Gulf and up the Persian Gulf to Ararat, making a pyramid. It would be 300,000 square miles, two and a half times the size of Ireland, Scotland, Scotland and England combined. This means historically and biblically, that the terror now placed on the shoulders of the United Nations members meeting in downtown New York is that the 12 tribes of Israel, the Jews, own all of Transjordan in northern Arabia for about 60 miles. They also, also own all of the Golan Heights, Lebanon, Lake Moran, all of Galilee, and the first branch of the Nile River in Egypt, which would include the Sinai Peninsula. Eventually, this goes clear to the great river Euphrates. The UN will not obey God or pay any attention to the Bible, so they will pay the price which Paul says they will pay in the New Testament. They will be cut off by the author of the Bible, and Allah will have nothing more to do with it than Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck. God is not going to take back his promises, his unconditional covenant to the nation of Israel. Listen, this this is this is a literal, physical, visible kingdom on earth with the son of David sitting on the throne of David in Jerusalem, ruling and reigning the earth through the Jewish people 
for a thousand years with a rod of iron. And that's just the word of God. That is not allegorical. That is not symbolical. And I don't care what cotton candy theology you made up in your own mind. You've turned your ear from the truth and have turned to fables. It's not a matter of understanding the word of God. It's not here. It's here. It's a matter of believing what God said. The problem is an evil heart of, unbe of unbelief. You don't believe what God said. That's practical atheism, covenant theology, replacement theology, all millennialism. Absolute BS. Bible stupidity. God's people, Israel, are in the land now, and they're going to stay there. Praise God. And I'm so glad that I can witness with my own two eyes God's faithfulness to the nation of Israel and know that God's same faithfulness applies to me. My life's verse, Philippians 1.6. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Not only is he going to perform all his promises to the nation of Israel till the day of Jesus Christ, he's going to perform his good work in you until the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. We do live in interesting times. Amen. Listen. God made a real estate deal with the nation of Israel. It was made by a guy, a God that cannot lie. And that's a promise you can take to the bank, Jack. Count on it. <laughs> Amen. You know I love you. And we'll see you in the next one.